Hello, this is Kuboperty. I have for you a primality tester program that I wrote in C++. Uh, this will check a number to see if it's prime, and it will tell you what the composite numbers are within that, all the numbers that it's divisible by. It does that by doing just one loop, sort of, that checks a number against every number that's below it, running a modulus operation. So you can see right here, I will, I'll go ahead and show you it running. I'll type in a number here, let's say 1,237. Will that be a prime number? Let's find out. Ah, whoa, it's a prime. Crazy. See, it ran against every single number. And it's giving you a remainder. And that's what the modulus operation does. It tells you, like basically a modulus operation, it says, is this number divisible by that number? And if so, what's the remainder? And it's showing you the remainder right there. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when it is a uh, non-prime. Okay. Let's say mm, 44. Whoop. Now what this did was it tells you every time that it hits a zero, you see? Zero from the simple operation means that there's no remainder, which means it's a prime number. Very simple, you see. Divisible by 2, by 4, by 11, by 22, and of course by itself. Now, how does this program work? And look, it tells you the time it took. In the background, I'm going to have it uh, check a really big number. Let's say uh, 4 million. 784,523. Boop. Let that run in the background. So here we are. Ah. Words. I define a couple variables. One is the number that the user will be entering. That will be n. I have it just as an integer. Okay. Now, I'm using sin. That's, you know, cn, meaning input. Okay. So the user will be entering a number after this dialog, and the sin command will be plugging that number into this variable, so it's storing it in that memory position. Next, I have a Boolean variable called isPrime, and I'm setting it to true, so by default it's true. And whenever it hits one of these things, it'll be marked as false. Whenever it... Uh, like if this, if any of these were a zero, the second it becomes a zero, we know that this number is not a prime because somewhere within these four million, four point seven million, there is a number that is uh, that will divide ours, our our uh, user input number. Then I have a another integer, just as a loop counter. But it's more than a loop counter because right here you see in the loop it's a while loop while i which will start at nothing i guess no it'll start at two sorry okay <laughs> i will start at two okay meaning this loop will just have this variable with the value of two at the end of this loop it'll go up by one that's what this right here means i plus plus okay so it goes from two Right, and then the 3, then the 4, and so on. And it says, while i is less than n, do all this stuff in the middle. And n will be the user variable. So in this case, I wrote 4.78 million, whatever it is. So this will check, but this loop will go 4.78 million times. <laughs> right? It's crazy. Look, we're, we're getting there. We are getting there. I think we're at uh, 478,000. Yeah. So, in here, we say, I'm, I'm, I created a new variable called j. Okay. Now, j, right here, the result of the modulus operation to determine if the result is 0. If, if 0, then the i tested can divide in. Okay. See, so it's very good to write comments on your little code here. So, 
the math operation n modulus i if that is zero see if that is zero then do this right here i will iterate the prime counter up one all right and i will define its prime as false i'll display this text boom your number is divisible by i because that's the thing we're on and then i have this right here this is an array an array is like a variable that holds other variables and I'm telling it to insert the value of i at this position. You can you can make this as a number here. Okay, component array position, whatever that may be. Now I have prime counter up here by default zero. Okay, this is just a variable. I named it prime counter, and in this loop, prime counter immediately goes up to one, which means this is position one of this array, which will get this value right here. Okay, and it goes to end. And then it displays the number, that symbol right here, that number, equal sign, and that number. And if you look over here, right, that number, that symbol, that number, that symbol, and that number. Right? Cool stuff. Quotation marks means, you know, just text, you know, and this is our variable that the user entered, and this right here was our counter, quote unquote. And this right here is the value of that operation, uh, the modulus operation. Okay. And then at the very end, after after this goes through the entire cycle, and after or once you know i equals n, because you know it has to be less than for it to stay in the loop, it will then check these two or check this if else statement. If is prime is true, then display this text right here. Your number is prime. And that's it. Okay. But if it's false, I want it to display all the numbers that this number is comprised of. Your number is not a prime. Your number is composed of one times, and then see, there's no space or this right here. Endl. Think that. Uh, think of that as n line. See over here, I have it. Your number is a prime n line, which means it'll go down, like a typewriter. Your number is not a prime; it goes down. But right here, there is none, which means all of this text right here will be right next to it in a straight line. So you can have like a bunch of code appear between the middle of the line, and it'll be transparent. So right here, there's a loop right here, and I want it to display the contents of that array that I filled up with all the values that divide uh, our main number. So starting at 1 until, see see this right here? This is the for loop, and the way it works is for this duration, okay? Starting off with i equals 1, ending at when i is less than the capacity of the counter thingy <laughs> that I made before, plus 1 because I started at zero, or sort of, it's complicated. And then I wanted to iterate uh, plus one, that's I plus plus, okay? So then it'll do display the contents. Count is just like uh, thin, so C out, C in. This means like print on the screen versus gather input. Okay. C out, uh, component array, position, I, which is the value of this loop right here, and display this right here in between. See, there's a space right here and right here, so it should display like a number, x space, a number space, you know, like that. And at the very end, I want it to display the duration that it took. So it'll say it took duration, which is this value right here, which is this function clock. That's what that means this little symbol like you know, the parentheses that means this is a function in C++ clock minus start start is a variable I defined up earlier which is a actual clock function it I guess captured the time and plugged into that variable and then the clock itself is running you know at all times like the system clock and I say the current time minus that initial time divided by ticks per second and it'll display it like a number and there'll be seconds <laughs> that's how you make it look like actual seconds otherwise it'll just be a weird number yeah and to be clear 
this stuff right here, see how there's a gap right here? See it says int main. Think of this as like the main program. And this right here is like header information. Okay, you can put all this stuff in a different file and then just include, see, hashtag include. You can make your own file that contains all this stuff. But I didn't, because this is small. Okay, this right here contains the time function. Uh, I don't really need this at all, actually. And this right here contains the C in, C out. Okay, and this right here contains the names for all those things. Otherwise, I'd have to include a uh, certain line for every time I use a command. But see, this uses up a lot of memory. It makes the file size really big because it has to attach all these files to this program that I'm not using. So to make it, you know, optimize, there are certain things you could do, but I'm not doing those things because this is a very small program. And it's still just turning away. Man, look at that thing. It's just going, man. Ugh. Aren't you curious to see whether or not this number is a prime? <laughs> I don't think it uh, it popped yet, but yeah. So I'll go over this one more time, and I, I'll include this in the uh, comments below, of course. So, doo -doo 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 -doo. so these two are just things that hold other things. This isn't really my little code right here. It's just you know include files. Uh, here's the main program. This is the variable that the user will be entering. Here is the welcome text. See, welcome to the program. New line, this right here, this slash n in that direction is the same thing as a endl, as a end line. Same thing as this, see? Okay. Please enter number, calc, calc, calc. Those are like prints. So like, that just means print this line on the screen. So see how it's See in, gather the number, put it into variable n, got it? See out, got a little line right here just for text, put a space in, set the boolean variable is prime to true for default, and then this is our counter variable for our loop that will be checking each number uh, with the modulus operation to see if the result is zero. This right here will be storing the value of that modulus operation. This right here is the array that will be holding all the numbers that end up dividing our number. Uh, through that modulus operation. Every number that makes zero at the end of the modulus operation will be stored inside this array. I give it 25 positions, uh, you know, just for the for the heck of it. Uh, just, you know, I don't think it's ever gonna have that many, you know, divisible numbers instead of a number, <laughs> unless I do it on purpose. So I just give it that size. And this right here will be ticking through our array, each position. So I'm starting at zero, okay? This right here is the beginning of our loop. Uh, they'll be checking all the numbers. And I'm starting at two because you don't need to check by one because every number is divisible by one, including all the primes. <laughs> so I don't want it to pop, so I'm starting at two. This right here is a function that was defined in time.h, uh, the file up there, clock underscore t. And I'm making a variable of this type. You see over here? Uh, when it goes, uh, this is the variable letter, you know, I, and this is the data type, int, it's an integer. This is the name I, I created myself, is underscore prime. This is the data type of boolean. And this is the name start, and this is the data type clock, underscore t. So this, this will record the system time, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> store, it in, store it in the word start, because later on, I'm going to take that value subtract it from the current time, divide it by clocks per second, and put it in the double data type. So I have some more zeros, like 0 .0002. Otherwise, you wouldn't have all that. You would have just like, you know, smaller numbers for the time. And I'm going to move through while. This is a while loop. Now you can see where the loop begins and ends because of these brackets right here. The curly brackets define like little portions of code. So right here, begins and ends. If you click on it, you see where it ends, because that highlights too. The main program, same thing. This right here is the entire main program. It ends right there, because that's a curly bracket. This curly bracket ends right here, and this curly bracket. So you can see, if right here is all of this right here. Right? So, within this little while loop, it'll do 
this whole thing as long as i is below n and every round it ticks up until i equals n and then right here it runs this program right here or sorry, it runs this little equation right here n modulus i to see if there is a zero it stores the value inside j the value of course will be the remainder of this operation okay. this right here interesting <laughs> so I'm trying to make this up uh, I made this time function here right and uh, I defined the variable as a data type and then I set that data type to the current time with this function right here okay then I set a new variable a double variable this is just a normal a more precise number as the current time it's like a three a three part of there <laughs> I'm making that variable and right here, see the double equal sign? This means is it equivalent to, not it equals. So if j is equivalent to 0, so j was the value, then it is uh, divisible, which means it's not a prime. I'll bump the prime counter up, making room in this array, which will hold the value of i, the current loop uh, position. I'll say it's not a prime set in this boolean variable which can only be true or false to false. I'll display all these little text lines. Boom! Your number is divisible by i. I'll insert i into the uh, array and I'll display c out print endl just the end line just a gap. That loop right there is uh, this little if functions over. Display the text you see right here streaming and then set the loop forward. And it'll run for every single position below your number. Now, uh, prime numbers, you only really have to test uh, up to halfway through the number. Or I think it's the square root of the number. <laughs> but either way, up to half. You know, uh, because it's symmetrical on both sides of the number stack. But I'm doing every single one because I want to see what all the components are. But you could figure out what the, what the other half is from getting the first half. But... You know, whatever. And then over here at the very end, after the loop, it'll say, if the number is prime, then display this text, your number's prime. See, that portion's over else. So if it's... So with a Boolean, you don't have to say, you know, is it equivalent to, because if you don't say anything, you're implying that it's true. Else, do all this, which means it's not true, which means it's not a prime, okay? Insert a couple lines, insert some text, and uh, display the contents of the component array, which I filled up earlier. Right char. And then display the time it took with this function right here. Now this here at the end, um, main always has to have return zero, so it's a part of C++. This is the end of the bracket right here. I put sin.get right here because this is just a function that waits for a keystroke, like press any key. You know? That's what this is actually right there, press any key. I do that to keep the window open, otherwise it'll just close. If you ever had like a DOS prompt or a console window just open and close, it's because you don't have that by default. Man, that number is taking forever. I was trying to stall <laughs> to let this number go by, but uh, that is quite impressive. Man. Uh, crazy, 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 crazy. Well, maybe sometime I'll I'll do a live stream of a really big number. How about that? Uh, maybe tonight I'll do a live stream of a really big number being tested uh, for primality. So hopefully you understood all that, and uh, I want to go ahead and post this uh, the text of all this, you know, into the. Uh, uh, description below and uh, if you have any questions just let me know and I'll answer it because I do that you have a fantastic day goodbye and oh yes like and subscribe I have lots of VR content usually lots of VR stuff 
and uh, I would really appreciate a Starbucks gift card. Starbucks gift card. Come on, man. Look at these numbers. I'll go ahead and stop it. This is due five thousand one hundred and twenty-three. See that? It works. It is composed of. Oh, did I close it? Did I close it? Let's do that again. Five thousand one hundred twenty-three. Cool, baby. Pretty cool. I should get some data out of here too, because you know, uh, you're seeing what the remainder is for all these values. Doing all these math problems so fast. So I, I put this boom here because it's you know, uh, clearer the gap there. So you can see whenever it hits a zero, see. Divisible by 109, 109 right there, zero. Yep, pretty cool. Is 109 a prime? Is 109 a prime? Because 47 looks like a prime. Let me see if 109 is a prime. Is that the pattern? Is that the pattern? It's a prime. <gasps> Does it show you all the primes below a number? Let's find out. No, because 22 is a prime. But is it a prime and a non-prime? Just two numbers together. Okay, let's try uh, 5, 3, 7, uh, 9. One prime, prime, prime. Composed of a couple primes. 163, 49, 1793. Let me try it. 163. 163. Prime. Ooh. This is interesting. This is interesting. Prime. Well, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, goodbye. Subscribe, like it, share it to your friends that need help. Help.